It's a Canadian, Paddy Conklin, who's been running the CNE Gateway since 1937, who's running the Gateway down here at the World's Fair. Paddy, uh, maybe a kind of a blunt question, but what will the prices be like? Are they going to be high or are they going to be low or decent for the average family when they come to the World's Fair Gateway? The prices are going to be extremely low. It may interest our viewers to know that there will be nothing more than 50 cents and only one attraction at 50 cents, seven at 35 cents, and 11 of them at 25 cents. We're trying to make it within the reach of everyone, rich or poor, to have a little fun here at the Gateway at the World's Fair. There'll be no specially high prices any days or any special time at all? No, the price will be the same on the closing day as we're going to have on the opening day. Saturdays and Sundays, of course, we expect to have fabulous crowds of people, but the prices will be exactly the same. What, what can you have new for a gateway, though? Gateways are gateways the world over, aren't they, Paddy? Is there anything really new in the gateway behind us here? Frankly, we have 11 things that are going to be entirely new that have never been seen in the Dominion of Canada or in the United States. All of these new writing devices and fun shows and fun houses are coming from Europe. And there's three of them being made right here, right in close proximity of Seattle that have never been shown in the United States. And I'm happy to tell our viewers that uh, there are 17 of the things that will be in the gateway at the World's Fair that have never been seen anywhere in the state of Washington. Does this gateway here make the one at the CNE look small and just a trifling thing? Well, the C&E has been in business for 83 years, and I've been there since 1937. I'm occupying four acres of the 74 acres at the World's Fairgrounds, and at the C&E, I only occupy seven acres, so I would say it's very comparable in size. You're looking forward to making a lot of money? Well, no, I'm looking forward to have a lot of fun here, the same as the people that are going to come out here and patronize and visit this great World's Fair. Well, here we are standing at the exit to the monorail in the shadow of the Space Needle. And with me is Hogue Sullivan, the Space Needle manager. Now, Hogue, how close are you to being ready for opening day on April 21? Jack, we're running awfully close. Uh, actually, we get our final elevator uh, April 20th, which is the day before opening. Uh, we're work working overtime. We're working seven days a week. Uh, as you've seen from the activity around here now, it's a pretty busy place. If you want to figure something unusual, if you look right up there, there's 146 men working there right now. Actually, Jack, when you think of that number of people up there, you're looking at the base area, and um, on predictions that we have now, if you figure we're going to put an average of 10,000 people a day through the needle, I say through the needle, we have three elevators, as you know, that take the people to the restaurant or observation platform. But when you think of the small base area we have. We have waiting mazes and so forth, but uh, getting the people to have to buy their tickets, to get in line, to get up, and uh, to average 10,000 a day, we'll be hitting 20,000 some days in August when the big crowds arrive. So um, there's a lot of work being done on paper that doesn't particularly involve the construction. Of course, the construction is a very important phase, too. How long will it take to go up in the bottom, on the elevator, right up to the circulating restaurant? Jack, the actual time on the two high-speed elevators is 43 seconds from the base to the observation tower. We have a third elevator, which is a service elevator, which will be a little slower. This will be used for passengers probably 95% of the time, but this is also to supply the restaurant and get the restaurant... From the base out. to the tower is 500 feet. That's right. From the tower to the observation platform is what? Oh, from the, from the restaurant to the observation tower is another... 25, 30 feet. Is there any feeling of motion as you're sitting there dining in the sky and the floor going round? Oh, no, no. The, with the floor, there's no motion whatsoever. We've tested it with a half dollar on edge and a cigarette on edge, and uh, they both stay. And this is a privately owned project? That's right. Mm -hmm. Cost how much? It'll be about $4 million before we get through. It'll be a long while before you make your money back even at the World's Fair. Yes, it's going to take a little while.
Uh, the Performing Arts event here at the Seattle World's Fair will be the biggest in the history of the world ever put on by one group. Again? That's right. It's going to cost $20 million in a six-month period. To put on your cultural entertainment? That's right. From the plans, I see it's going to be a kind of four-ring circus in different cultural grades, right? That's right. We'll have an arena, and in there we'll have big-name bands, Count Basie, uh, Benny Goodman, things like this. We'll have a 12,000-seat stadium where we'll have free attractions all day long. There'll be circus acts, horse shows, everything like that. Then we'll have the opera house, which will be kind of our long hair thing. And in the opera house, we'll have, uh, well, for instance, we're going to open it with uh, Van Cliburn and Igor Stravinsky. Mm -hmm. And then we have a nice little intimate playhouse with 800-seat houses, or 800 seats, rather. And in there, we'll have, uh, for instance, Hal Holbrook will do his famous one-man show, Mark Twain, tonight. What is the hottest attraction on your uh, menu at the moment, culturally speaking? Culturally speaking, it's probably the Van Cliburn opening concert. And right after that comes the old Vic Company from London. Now, when you say $20 million project, this frightens me about prices. What about prices? Are they going to be sky high and frighten us away? They'll be the cheapest you can find them in the country. Be much lower than uh, you would pay at a normal theater. For instance, the old Vic Company, you'll be able to get to see it for around two seventy-five. dollars Your top price will be what? On the old Vic will be five dollars. Now, why are the tick sales for the tickets for these events not on sale yet up in Vancouver and out Outway Points? The only place you'll be able to get the tickets uh, for people in Vancouver will be here at the fair, and uh, you can get those by writing into box nine thousand Q A. What's your deficit going to be on your entertainment budget when you wrap up at the end of the six months? That's a hard question to answer. We're hoping to break even. We know we won't make money. But you're going to have fun. We're going to have fun, right. Uh, I think... Interesting to note that for every request we get from 48 states, we must get at least 25 from California. Well, they're the traveling guests, the, the, the people with most eye on the world's fair at the moment, eh? I think... Mr. Lee, there's one facet which I know is worrying you. A national news magazine said bluntly in black and white that Seattle is nearly totally sold out for lodgings. What is the truth of the lodging accommodation for visitors from B.C. or anywhere else for the six-month period of the World Fair? Well, Mr. Webster, we have accommodations for all periods of the fair. We have yet to refuse accommodations to any single inquiry. Now, we're aware of the magazine article, and... Uh, uh, we did take some action to get a correction on that, but unfortunately they were unable to publish it in the letters to the editors. It'll be a reverse good publicity. You're now able to stress that there is ample accommodation. There are ample accommodations, and we're very confident that we will have accommodations all through the fair at any time that people wish to come. At what prices, though? This kind of worries uh, the people from B.C., perhaps, you know? Well, for two people, we go from $7 low to $17 high, which we think is a... Uh, it's a price area that would be, uh, uh, we could compare to any area at any time. No real increase from last year, up a little bit maybe. Well, there's no increase. We, ha we have the same rates right now that were established for the 1961 tourist season, carried well, through. What kind of bookings do you have now? Your expo lodging actually conducts bookings for individuals, does it? Uh, that's absolutely correct, for individuals and groups, or, and convention groups also. Then, of course, uh, we are finding that this fair, apparently, is going to be the, the uh, greatest attraction for youth groups of any fair that they've, we've ever had in the past. We have many, many of those. Let me give you just a small example of what we go through. In a five-day period of last week, we had 5,100 requests by mail for accommodations, and these involved 30,600 nights that people would be staying in Seattle, which gives us an average stay of six days per request. Is there any comfort for British Columbia accommodation owners or any Americans going to stay up there and come down to the fair? Oh, we're, we have these requests all the time. Any time that the uh, people indicate to us that they're going to spend five to six days in this area, it certainly indicates the balance of their vacation is going to be in the Pacific Northwest. How about inquiries from British Columbia? 
Uh, British Columbia is the, uh, is the second largest area that we have inquiries from. The first, of course, is California. And it is interesting.